out of an era under No Child Left Behind where the theory of school reform was really about setting goals and targets and then uh, having consequences which began to feel significantly like punishments for those who did not meet the goals and targets. And that really drove an approach which ended up making a lot of uh, schools feel that they didn't have time to really attend to all the features of the whole child. And I think that's one of the reasons that uh, the new accountability approach in, in California is allowing people to think more holistically about what we're trying to accomplish for children and how we get there. But the science is also uh, catching up in ways and, and really leading the way with evidence from neuroscience, developmental science, learning science that tells us a lot about what actually enables people to learn effectively. And that drives uh, a whole different vision in many respects for how we think about schooling. So this paper, which you have a copy of, and I want to recognize my co-author, Shauna Kukarvi. Please wave your, there's Shauna. You'll hear from her. <laughs> You'll hear from her on the next panel, I believe. Uh, this started really with uh, an eye towards assembling that evidence base, that science base. We're very grateful to the California Endowment for supporting this work. Uh, and a lot of the work that underlies it came from our uh, support that we have from Bechtel and Stewart Foundation and the Chan Zuckerberg in Initiative, all of whom are really trying to tackle this question about what do we know about educating children uh, in all of their parts for success uh, throughout school and in college and career. I'm going to go very quickly through this presentation and it will be on the Learning Policy Institute website, so don't worry about catching every piece as we go along because I really want to get, uh, after we talk a little about the kids feel that their learning is uh, supported and they get credit for their ultimate learning rather than being ranked against other students. Competition is only motivating for the kids at the top. It's not motivating for everybody else. Uh, it's demotivating, right? If I'm competing against myself, if my goal is to achieve mastery, if I'm going to see my own growth as being supported and reinforced, then I'm motivated uh, to continue my efforts. Obviously, we need to teach children to learn to learn. Uh, and that means we have to model and teach self-regulation and metacognition. Kids need the opportunity to reflect on their work using rubrics to evaluate peer work and their own work, as well as to get feedback on their work, to, uh, to gradually uh, engage in the kind of project-based learning that allows them to see the results, uh, to revise those results, to meet standards, and then to know that they're going to be able to find resources uh, and put those together to address problems and tasks. And finally, uh, as many of you know, we need structures that reach beyond the classroom, uh, personalized supports to address particular student needs, uh, integrated services are very important, and we have in California some community schools that are taking root that really provide the health, mental health, social services, community partnerships that provide uh, uh, engagement with uh, a variety of groups. And there's a state role in this and a county role and a district role to make that come together in a way that is doable. It's not always going to be on site but it can be through a variety of connections that allow us to blend and braid the work and the funding. Uh, LPI just put out a community school playbook, which you can find on our website, which actually shows some of the state and local policy moves that are possible to create community schools. Multi-tier systems of support are now being developed in many districts, and the state has an initiative on this. The key is to teach all the adults who work with kids to buy into the same developmental framework, to work in a collaborative way around the same set of ideas and goals, uh, and then to use those uh, systems of support quickly, uh, responsively, without lengthy identification and labeling processes. We've gotten into a place with special education. It's comes from the federal law, it gets elaborated in uh, state and uh, district you know, regulations and procedures, where it's really hard to get kids the support they need, and we haven't built schools to allow for uh, a child to, for example, if they're not reading in second grade, immediately get reading recovery support, or some other kind of specialized one-on-one -on -one or small group support, or if they have uh, lost a parent or experienced uh, an act of violence, that they immediately can get that counseling support. And of course, there are costs associated with it, but there are also structural redesigns that are necessary uh, to ensure that kids can get what they need when they need it uh, without bureaucracy 
uh, getting in the way. So after school, summer school supports are very important. A study from Johns Hopkins found that if you look at rich and poor schools, rich and poor kids at ninth grade, uh, two thirds of the difference in their achievement is because of summer learning loss. One third is because of the difference that was present at kindergarten. If we could get preschool and summer school in place to ensure that kids are continuing to progress in enriching ways, uh, that would make a huge difference. Finally, we did a survey of California school principals saying where they wanted more professional development, and nine out of 10 of them want professional development for this work uh, to create uh, uh, environments that uh, uh, support students with personal and social responsibility, to support deeper learning for teachers and students, to support students' social and emotional development, and so on. So this is an area where there's a very obvious agenda for California. So we have three major areas of recommendation. I just want to take stock of where are we as a state in moving towards support for whole child education. First thing we need to do, first thing a state needs to do, and this is also true for districts and counties, is focus the system on developmental supports for children, which in the end make all the difference in what they're able to do in school and in life. That includes measures of school climate and social emotional supports and school exclusions and accountability and improvement systems, and we are at least halfway there. It's in our accountability system. Uh, it could be better supported, it could be annualized, it could be uh, integrated into uh, the work that districts and counties do to a greater extent, but we've made that first step in California. The second is to adopt guidance for social, emotional, and cognitive learning that clarifies the competencies students should be helped to develop and the practices that can help them accomplish these goals. Uh, in some states, they've adopted standards for social emotional learning in some districts, and we'll hear more from Heather and others about the work that's going on in uh, CORE and Taylor, uh, that there are these kinds of explicit statements of competencies so people know what they're working toward, and then they tie that to school-wide practices and to teaching practices. It doesn't do to have teachers in an oasis in their classrooms doing things to support students' social emotional learning if the school as a whole is still operating in a way that is antithetical to the work that's going on in the classroom. And so the school as a whole has to take up uh, the, these goals and infuse it into what goes on on the playground, what happens when kids walk in the building in the morning, what kind of supports are available throughout the school. Replacing zero tolerance policies with policies that are focused on restorative practice and social emotional learning is uh, underway in many places, although not uh, uh, across the entire state, but we have moved from uh, a state policy that was zero tolerance to a new set of approaches. There's a bill on the governor's desk uh, right now to push that further towards uh, helping schools replace exclusion with productive means to teach, support, and enable kids to adopt uh, desirable behaviors. Um, incorporating educator competencies regarding the support is obviously uh, part of everything through licensing and accreditation. Uh, I don't know if Mary Sandy is here or people from the CTC, if you are, there she is way in the back. So <laughs> Mary is my partner at the CTC. Uh, she's the executive director. I'm currently chairing the commission and we have infused uh, these kinds of knowledge bases around social emotional learning and restorative practices into licensing requirements for teachers and principals. And we have evidence from a recent uh, principal survey that newly prepared principals feel much better prepared in these areas than uh, principals prepared earlier. So it is starting to take root in programs. We need to go further with that. We need to provide the professional learning for all educators to enable them to be effective in this regard. If your only tool has been kicking kids out, it's hard if you don't get opportunities to see and learn other strategies to take on an approach that will actually teach kids to uh, learn and behave in different ways. Uh, and then obviously providing funding for school climate surveys, social emotional learning, and restorative justice programs. We have a toe in that. Uh, direction, we need to get our uh, whole foot and leg uh, into uh, the kind of funding supports that will allow this to take root. The second area is to design schools to provide settings for healthy development. Uh, that includes the kind of structural changes that I described that allow teachers to care effectively for their students. 
uh, so that uh, they don't, as a high school teacher, just have 200 kids across seven or eight classrooms, but everyone does have a small advisory where they can really work with those kids and every kid has teachers who know them well. Uh, developing school-wide norms and supports for identity-safe, culturally responsive classrooms. Kids, when they come into a school, should see a multicultural uh, view of the world. Uh, they should experience that in their curriculum. They should get explicit uh, uh, signals from teachers and administrators that they are valued and viewed as competent. Uh, because if a kid is experiencing the social identity threats that our society is full of and that are getting more pronounced every time the president tweets, uh, we have to actually expect that they will be on guard and expect the school to be unsafe unless we explicitly and proactively make it safe and, and communicate that it is a safe and caring and supportive place in which their competence will be recognized and developed. Developing multi-tiered systems of support, uh, again, is underway, but there's a lot of work to do in that regard. Providing extended learning time to ensure that students don't fall behind, uh, from tutoring models to reading recovery to after-school supports to summer enrichment, and then designing an outreach to families. Uh, in ways that are actually responsive to families' needs. And finally, uh, you know, ed teaching is the profession on which all other professions depend. Uh, educator development has to be at the heart of this work. Uh, all of us who go into the profession want to do the best thing that we can do for our kids. Uh, but we all come from different backgrounds. Uh, some of us from families that modeled all kinds of uh, sophisticated practices for conflict resolution and for uh, developing norms, and some of us from dysfunctional contexts where those were not behaviors that we saw. Uh, the same thing for kids. So we need to invest in educator preparation and wellness uh, so that teachers learn strategies for themselves. Uh, we know that actually that improves student achievement when educators uh, are both mindful and calm and able to manage their own uh, emotions and when they have tools for stress management uh, as well as tools for social and emotional teaching and learning. Preparation programs need to be really mindful of this. I think someone may be here from the San Jose um, Teacher Ed program. Is Nancy here? There she is. <laughs> You're so short I couldn't see you. <laughs> Stand on a chair so people can see you. Uh, Nancy Markowitz is from the San Jose Reaching and Teaching the Whole Child Center, and they've worked on both pre-service and in-service uh, teacher development uh, and uh, uh, educator development in other roles as well. Uh, obviously, we need to develop uh, in-service programs uh, and invest in educator recruitment and retention uh, through high retention partnerships. We have a huge teacher shortage right now in California. Uh, that actually undermines this agenda because people, we've had about 10,000 people coming in on substandard credentials in recent years, each year. Uh, about 6,000 on emergency permits with they're not in any kind of program. Uh, what we actually know is that not only does that undermine uh, achievement for young people, uh, those educators typically are more likely to exclude students from the classroom because they don't have tools and skills to enable them to meet students' needs. Uh, we also know that they have turnover at higher rates, two to three times higher turnover. Discontinuity is very disruptive for kids and adds to their anxiety and stress and actually undermines achievement. So we have to solve that problem in order to uh, solve all of these other problems as well. But I would say that California is well launched on the path to being uh, a state that can lead in the area of whole child education. And our job over the coming years is to build on all of the things that have been planted here uh, in the new accountability system, in the new uh, preparation system, uh, and really take uh, the uh, opportunity to ensure that every child comes to school surrounded by those secure relationships, those supportive instructional strategies, uh, and the environment that helps them grow, that allows them to be the contributors to our state that will lead us into the future. Thank you.